Thanks everyone for all the interest in the HT1 that came from eBay the other day. So this is how it came with a little extra packing. And uh, <clears throat> there's another view of how it looks. So I thought we had a bunch of questions about what was in there, how does it look, and all that stuff. So while I power it up, we will look and see. It looks like uh, four screws on front and back to get into it. Um, we'll power it up first, make sure it's working, and we will flip over the antenna switch so we can hear it. There's one guy on 40 meters. We can see if we can find the same guy. We're going to use the uh, the Thomas favorite, the anchor, and we'll put that into phone. We will power it up, and I'll switch over the antenna. Let's see here. We'll turn this on. And then we will... We're in memory mode, so we'll, there's 40 meters, and we heard the guy, so I'll hit uh, VFO mode, and then we're going to go up to 40 or 55, and we'll see if he's still there, and we'll change tuning rates. Looks like he may have left us. Let's go back over there and see. Yep, all's quiet. So we'll get out the screwdriver and we'll take a peek inside. So we will go back. The K2 is above us on the bench. All right, so I think I'm gonna try from the front since I've never had it apart. I'm not sure what the best way is. Oh, there's our guy back again. Let's see. See what I'm doing. Thought I heard a guy or a person. Could have been wrong. Nope, not right now. We'll wait around 55 and see what we come up with again. There he is. Sounds like a straight key, so we'll listen to that while we open it. So the, uh, the credits here go to BD4RG. Apparently that is the designer and uh, it was distributed by CR Kits and this was all six years ago so I don't know how many of you have one it was the first time I'd ever seen one but then uh, when I got it that of course let me go off and look and I did find the manual is online and uh, it's called in the manual, an HT1A, even though it says HT1 on the front. So I don't know if the A is a later version, but coincidentally on the manual that I have, it says HT1A up here and HT1 here. So that may just be the way it was done. And it looks like I'm smart if I take the top two screws and take the top shell off. Otherwise, we might lose the whole case. There's a QRL from somebody. Off frequency. <laughs> so we got one guy sending CQ and the other guy calling QRL. They should get together, don't you think? All right, so the top is extruded and it's set up to hold, uh, it looks like PC cards. So that's kind of cool. So there is your view of the inside. It is pretty clean. So it has a front panel board with the LCD and likely the uh, main processor lives up there. And it doesn't look plug-in. It looks uh, more like soldered in. It looks like three crystals in the crystal filter. I did look online, try to find a schematic, but I didn't see one yet. But I think we can guess 
Uh, it says DDS VFO with a 50 more, 54 megahertz uh, reference. And it uh, looks like a standard maybe super hit with a crystal filter. And uh, we can follow along where the low pass filter is and probably guess. Let's see. What do you think? I guess this is probably the output transistor, but I don't know. I don't want to bend it to find out. We'll have to look at that in a bit. So anyway, there's the question of what was in there. And the cool feature is that I can see. I'm going to look at the bottom just because I'm interested now. I thought it's cool that it has a selectable side tone, 500, 600, or 700 hertz. I don't know if that changes the uh, IF peak or not, but at least changes the side tone. And it has tuning steps pretty low, actually 10 hertz, 100 hertz, kilohertz, and 100 kilohertz. So that I think makes it more tunable than some of the other DDS radios that I've got, the QRP kits. So that's kind of cool. And there's the bottom. And again, it's the same extruded thing with the card holder in it and four rubber feet. So that's kind of cool. And the board's quite clean. I don't see any rework at all. And the BNC is soldered directly in. So there's no real chassis wiring except the uh what would that be i guess that's volume because this is tuning and that's volume so the volume control plugs in nothing else does it says it has an onboard charger which i guess you plug in your they say a lithium ion 12 volt pack and then they say once you do you switch the jumper i guess and then instead of this being input power it becomes charge only which is a kind of a good feature so that answers the question of what was in there. Oh, and there is the output transistor too. So let me zoom in, you guys can read it. Maybe. Let's see if I can get the light over here. And we'll see what we can do. There we go. So it's an IRF 510. That's kind of a cool way to do the output. So we're guessing that's why they deliver I think a pretty solid five watts out of it and uh, they say it runs on 9 to 15 volts so I guess you could take it out playing with it with batteries probably pulling out people's eyes sorry about that okay well I think I'm going to call that the moment so we've uh, we haven't been on the air with it I'll do that next time up we'll see who we can work with it but it is certainly simple and clean looking so if you uh, have an HT1 or an HT1A let me know and uh, I think it says, let's see, what do, we, what do we have for band coverage? We have, we have 40 and 20. So that's the two bands that we can get out of this one. So if you have one on another band, let me know. Otherwise it looks like it's a 40, 20 meter dual bander. So Anyway, cool radio. I'm going to get it on the air soon, and we'll uh, we'll take a tour. You guys can vote. If you guys are uh, if you're doing slow speed CW, let me know. We'll get on what used to be the novice band, and we'll try it out there. See if we can get a schedule with a few people. Otherwise, we could do something like uh, top of the hour on a Friday or something like that, and just to see what we can do. All right. Well, thanks for watching. That's what was in the radio from eBay. See ya.